Welcome back to my channel. Today I have some fun projects for y'all. We are going to be doing a wood project and we're also going to be doing some thrift flips where I take items I have recently thrifted and upcycle them to more my style. And I want to thank Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. My neighbor is getting married and she asked me if I could make her a breadboard. So I picked out the perfect piece of cypress with the perfect wood grain and I'm going to make her something very special. The first thing I need to do is figure out the size. I think I want it to be around three feet. It's going to be a very long breadboard. So I'm just measuring my wood and cutting it out on my miter saw. Next, I need to create the handle. I like to custom draw every handle on every breadboard that way each one is unique so i just use a piece of wood to kind of figure out the center and i draw one side of the handle then i cut it out with my jigsaw then i take that piece and i turn it over and then draw it out and cut it out that way everything is symmetrical after doing tons of breadboards, I just figured out this is the easiest way to get both sides looking the same. And when using your jigsaw, it is best to use a blade that is a scroll saw blade. That'll get you the smoothest, cleanest cut. Sometimes I just leave the bottom of my board straight, but if I want it to have a rounded edge, I do the same process. I draw one side, I cut it, and then I take that cut off to trace the other side of my board. Next, you want to take some very rough sandpaper and go over your entire breadboard, especially the edges. You want to round everything out, smooth everything out. This is where if you had any imperfections using the jigsaw, you could fix it. Now, it does take a minute with the 80 grit sandpaper if you want to go faster if you have an angle grinder with a sanding bit that is a lot lot faster but I don't know where my grinder <laughs> ended up during the move so 80 grit sandpaper definitely does a trick if that's what you have on hand once you have everything rounded out with the 80 grit then you want to take a 220 grit and just go over the whole board again and smooth everything out I am not worried about this breadboard being food safe. This is going to be a piece of decor only. So I'm going to be using Fusion's Matte Tough Coat. And I want to bring a little bit of richness to this board. So I'm going to be taking Fusion's Antiquing Glaze and just adding a little bit of that into my sealer. This will ensure that no yellow tones come out. I want to make sure everything is a very natural wood brown color. So I'm going to apply just two light coats on here. We're going to be writing on this board with Sharpie. So definitely if you're going to be coming back and writing on something, you want to seal it so that way the marker or the paint pen or whatever you're using doesn't bleed on the wood. But even if you're not adding something to it, I would definitely suggest sealing it because look at that beautiful wood grain. And if you wanted it to be food safe, you could use Fusions Beeswax or Hemp Oil. I have all of these products on my website and I'll have a link to everything in the description below. We are not done yet, but I just want to show y'all how beautiful this breadboard looks before we move on to the next step. So this breadboard is actually going to be her guest book. So instead of people coming in and signing a piece of paper, they are going to sign this beautiful board. But I don't want them just randomly signing their name all over the place. I have a vision for this. So I'm going in and I'm drawing lines with a pencil. It'll be very easy to erase the pencil marks, especially since this piece is sealed. I'm just using this spatula because I felt like it was the right size. It's about a half an inch. So I'm going to do the entire front of the board and then I'm also going to do the back just in case we end up needing that extra space. And just to ensure that guests know what to do, since we will be attending the wedding, I'm going to go ahead and sign our name right now. I ended up using a Sharpie and that was perfect. It wrote on the wood very good and it was nice and crisp and clear. It was an absolutely beautiful outdoor wedding on a beautiful day in Mississippi. The bride loved the breadboard and all of the guests followed the directions and signed on the line. I love how this piece came out. Y'all let me know what y'all think. 
Squarespace has all you need to power your e-commerce website. What I love is the ease of use, especially on the app and listing items, which is something that I do every single day. So open the app on my phone, I take my pictures, and you can also finish the listing in the app. So you can add your title, your description, your price, and your quantity. That is definitely important. And it is easy as that to list an item. So if you would like to try Squarespace, go to squarespace.com slash Julie's Designs and Signs, and they are giving my viewers 10% off when you use code Julie's Designs and Signs and I will have a link to everything in the description for y'all. Do y'all remember this beautiful swan that I thrifted? It's nice, heavy, solid wood, but it has this factory distressed finish on it that I was not digging. I want to give it more of a real antique look. I'm going to be using a new product that I have called Fusions Fresco Textured Powder. It's an additive to your paint to give it more of a textured look. It's supposed to kind of be like salt wash, but I've never actually used salt wash, so I can't compare it for y'all. I can only give y'all my, my opinion on this uh, Fusion Fresco Texturing Powder. So I'm gonna be using the color Little Lamb and I'm gonna add the fresco to it. The more texture you want, the more fresco you add to it. I wanted lots of texture, so I added lots of fresco and I definitely wanna cover up the orange on its beak. And I'm just gonna be adding the fresco to my gray paint, but you could go for a more layered look here by adding it to all the colors. And I want more of a darker color on the bottom, so that way maybe it kinda looks like it's been sitting in water or something like that. That's kinda what I had in my head. And I'm adding even more texture by stippling the paint onto the piece. Now you've seen me add baking soda to paint to get texture, but the problem with that is you can't can't sand it. If you sand the baking soda, it just kind of disappears. So right now we're just creating a base layer full of texture and the magic will really happen when we come back and sand it. This is what it looks like when it's all dry. You can really see all of the texture. Now the next step is to add the main color. I'm going to be using Fusions Milk Paint in the color London Fog. It's just a very beautiful off-white. I've already mixed it, so if you don't know, milk paint comes in a powder form and you mix half water with half powder. For this color, I wanted to get full coverage. So I ended up doing three coats of paint on here. And what I like to do on my last coat of milk paint is take out my heat gun and dry it with that. Because when you apply heat to milk paint, it gives you lots of texture and lots of crackle. And that is what I love about milk paint. And it also has just the flattest finish. I just I love milk paint. I am obsessed with it lately. If you have not tried it, I highly suggest getting you some milk paint and just trying it out. Now what I'm going to do is take some 220 grit sandpaper and lightly sand the piece and all of that gray texture that we put under here is going to start coming through and it's going to give this swan the true vintage look that I was going for. This was my first time using Fusion's Fresco texturing powder and it will definitely not be my last. To say that I am obsessed with the way this turned out would be an understatement. I love the way this came out and I need to find more swans ASAP. Y'all let me know if y'all think I achieved the vintage age look that I was going for. I'm so sorry it was such a short video this week. I hope y'all enjoyed it anyway and I will be back next week with more DIYs and don't forget to check out squarespace.com slash Julie's Designs and Signs if you are interested in starting your own e-commerce store and they are giving my viewers 10% off. I will have a link to everything in the description below. Y'all have a wonderful day and I will see you in the next video.